Hey guys, welcome back to Buster's Corner. Um, this is going to be, uh, we got a, a cool thing going on here. We got Tom is going to go over his. Hey Bob, is this going to be for something in the session you've got open or a different Hold on. thing? Uh, this is just IRF, uh, IFFFB um, install and training. Oh, cool. I haven't used that in a while. I'm interested. Okay. Let me f mute those guys. <laughs> okay. Um, anywho, so this is Tom's IRFFB. Um, he's going to share his screen for a minute, and he's going to walk us through... Um, he's going to walk us through uh, the process um, of how to use it, what it's good for, and all that kind of good stuff. So we have a live lobby going on here. And pretty soon Tom will share his room and we'll go from there. All right. Okay, D train, you're on. You need to be on push to talk or mute yourself, please. Because we can hear your wife in the background. I hate to hear her start yelling at you. All right, wait on Tom. Actually, D, D train. Oh, there he goes. Okay. All right, there's the live screen. Okay. Oh, there's Jack. Yeah, go ahead, Tom. We're already live on the on the on my side. Uh, can we get this bigger? I don't need to see all this. Oops. And IRFFB has been around a long time, and I'm gonna. I am shut off. Sorry, guys. There's there's a handful of people that have really worked on um, IRFFB. I I didn't create it. I just started uh, working with it. And so you know, guys, um, he goes up. So you'll see. I put. A, you'll notice I use GitHub a lot. So that's where I got uh, IRFFB from. From a guy named NL French. You'll see him up on. Um, the on live the forums. chat is open, he's, guys. He's the guy who created this thing. Then there's a, been other people YouTube. and a lot of people um, like Fuzzwa on GitHub. He's done a lot of work with it. Um, I do want to give a shout out to um, the iRacing engineer, David Tucker. He's he's a huge participant, a huge contributor on the iRacing forums and pretty much most of the stuff that I've got and that I've learned about IRF beating to be able to work with it. I got from all the, all the content he's put out there on the forums. It's amazing the amount of content he's put out there. All right, so I just want to simplify IRFB so people can really start to get a simple understanding of how this thing works. And so to start with, IRFB is simply enhancing the FFB signal from iRacing using primarily three forces. It, it, it uses steering torque, suspension forces, and then yaw. And it and it gets those that data using telemetry. So what it will also do is it'll take the IR, um, iRacing puts out um, force feedback updates every uh, once every 60 seconds, a 60 hertz signal. It's not once every 60 seconds, it's once every 60 milliseconds, which adds up to being a 60 hertz signal. So in a nutshell, that's what it does. That's how, when I'm using IRFFB, 
and I and I have it all perfectly tuned. That's how I'm able to get a, a much more enhanced um, feeling in my wheel than what I could get otherwise just from uh, the F, um, iRacing's FFB. Now I use a direct drive wheel from AccuForce, and I started playing with IRFFB when I was using a Logitech G29. And so for me, when, when I turned on IRFFB, got it working for the circle track cars, which it, nobody had done, turned it on for the circle track cars uh, using the understeer effects until I did that when I made modifications to IRFFB. And I'm telling you, it for G29 wheels, it, it's a big deal. It, all of a sudden, I could feel the road where I couldn't before. So, um, so then when I got my AccuForce wheel, I said, "Well, this is awesome. I, I don't need, I don't need IRFB anymore." And you know, with the next gen cars, we were fighting for a long time with the snap loose condition. And it was when I got to Martinsville, and the car was just snapping loose out of the corner. I said, "This is this is just not right. I mean, I'm not feeling this snap loose." until it's too late and I can't control it. I'm, I'm breaking loose. So I went back and turned on IRFFB and I said, holy cow, I can actually, I can feel that right rear just dumping on me long before I ever lost control of the car. And so that's when I said, hey, hey, maybe I need to take a whole nother look at this IRFFB. And then that's when I, I went down the path of updating it and calling it IRFFB uh, 2022 to give everybody an idea that, you know, that's when it was updated because IRFB had been around for, for many, many years before I showed up, right? So in a nutshell, IRFB is simply enhancing the FFP signal from iRacing using these forces in yaw and also running them through the signal processing filters to smooth out that signal. And just a little bit of perspective, what does that mean? So we can sometimes we can see the flicker in a fluorescent light bulb. That's a 60 hertz signal flicker. So we can actually we can actually start to feel, you know, an effect that's once every 16 milliseconds. So that's where without that smoothing, you get the you know the, the roughness of the feel of the wheel. And it's such a big deal that you know David Tucker just in the last update is actually included smoothing out of iRacing, um, and you can adjust that with the with the settings. All right, so that's what our IRFB is. All right, so <clears throat> this is your screen capture. This is what we're going to go through and talk about here. And that is we're going to we're going to download and install VJoy. Well, I'm not actually going to download. I'll show you where you can get it. Um, this is, but this is how you get it up and going. You download IRFB, the ex executable. Uh, you download the IRFB uh, DLLs, as well as the two overlays. Basically, you launch it and approve the DLL install in SimHub. Um, you would actually go into your your wheel software and you're going to lower most settings except for your force feedback intensity. We'll, we'll talk about that. And by the way, there are still, you can actually overdrive your wheel when you get in crashes with IRFB. So you got to be careful just how much you turn up your FFB wheel. But you're, you'll see you're, you're going to want to run that more on the high side and then control that. Um, with the max force in IRFP. And you'll see, I'll talk about that as we get through the configuring IRFP. Um, you'd launch IRFP, but you want to make sure that before you launch IRFP, you want to make sure that your wheel is turned on. So my AccuForce wheel gets very upset at me if I um, run IRFP before I turn on the wheel and let it calibrate. And Let me just give me a second. I actually have in the background, I'm in one of the uh, Daytona Road servers, and I thought it was it was going to be empty for me for a while. All right, um, you don't want to configure until until you launch this. You don't want to configure uh, IRFB until you're in the car in, at the track. You don't have to be in the car, but you have to be at the track because IRFB saves a car and track combination configuration. 
the previous versions would only save it per car. But when I was going through and updating the RFB, I realized you really need a, it's a car and track combination configuration. Now, once you set that, um, you, sh you pretty much won't be going back and doing a whole lot of configuring, except on the fly configuring with your um, key bindings with SimHub. Um, so what, just a, also on the last point here is the, you'll see, I'll show you that your the SimHub and IRFB, there's a synchronization thing that just the way the two programs work together. And you'll sometimes you'll have to um, hit a button a couple times to get the two programs to sync up, but it's really not a big deal. And then you're going to adjust the understeer wheel force to the desired level. Now that's, now we're going to go through all that. So don't worry about if I ran through that too quick, right? Um, so to give them a little picture of how the data flows, there's two main ways that IRFB works. The two modes, and this is where I simplified this in the 2022 because it got to be really confusing how it's being described, but there's either the game is providing the FFB signal or the IRFB is ignoring the game and IRFB is generating the FFB signal. So you hear about people talking about, well, sometimes I can I can run it without, I, a lot of people will run it without Bjoy as a driver being installed on your computer. And what they're doing is they're just, just allowing IRFB to completely generate the full force feedback signal using the telemetry and then it'll enhance it. Now, there comes with that a 29 millisecond delay uh, where you're, you've got the IRFB has to wait for that telemetry. Um, and for most tracks, you won't see that 29 millisecond delay as you translate that into how many feet does a car travel. It's when you may be running for us at next gen, you wanna pay attention to that when you're running Talladega or Daytona, and we're reaching those high speeds in those corners. That's when you'll know if you may be having a problem. And you can check that by asking somebody who's following you if, if you're swerving all around the track. If you're not holding your line, then and you're running this IRFB um, generated force feedback, then you may want to turn that down to where the game you're using the game FFB and you're going. Um, in the lower latency mode. And that's four milliseconds. And I've tested that and it works pretty good. So the idea here is those are the two main modes. And then once you understand, okay, where am I getting my force feedback from? Okay, now how do I want my signal enhanced, right? Um, do I want super smooth, which is a 720, or do I just want a 360 for smoothing? And so for me, most of the time I just run 360. Um, I don't think my hands can feel the difference with these between 360 and 720. Um, but you know, we'll, talk, we'll sh go over that a little bit more. Okay, so l let me ask a few questions. Does anybody, I went over that pretty quick. <clears throat> I'm going to ask any questions on, on this content so far, um, or did I confuse everybody? I don't think anybody's awake anymore. Yep, I know. I went through it pretty quick. It's a little dry, but we're going to get into hands-on here real quick, right? Um, I, I I got it. Okay. Um, so let me keep going. All right. So the VJoy driver, I'm I'm currently running 2.18. You can get that up on Source Forge, and then there's a download. You can download the latest version, run the setup, and it gets installed pretty pretty easily, right? Um, now, just just to be clear, a lot of people talk about it's buggy, it's buggy, it's buggy. And yes, they are correct. It is buggy. And so part of the decision you have to make is, is IRFB going to give you enough of an improvement that's worth putting up with some of the pains that comes with VJoy? My overlays, you'll find if you're using them, makes it much easier to manage through when VJoy um, doesn't want to talk to or 
doesn't want to talk to the game, or sometimes it's IRFB doesn't want to talk to direct input, the, the operating system, because um, for different, I tend to see problems arise when I'm flipping between screens, doing alt screen or, or, or alt, uh, Windows alt tab or whatever, right? Popping between screens. That's when I see a problem. Uh, somebody's come up on my GitHub and said, hey, they can make it repeatable if, when they go into replay and it, it starts dropping the direct input. The game, I think the game and the direct input, the Microsoft drivers and Boo Jury, they all start getting in a fight. But the template, the dashboard overlays gives you a much better view on when you know you have a problem. Um, all right. so. This is where you get my get the files. So the idea here is you want to always go over here to this this latest release, and then here's a list of files that you want to pull down. Um, here's the ones that this tells you exactly which files are what's going to do where what. It's this IRFB today does not use the VJOY DLL, so you just need the one executable that I have now put into my. Um, taskbar down at the bottom of the screen, so I click it when I'm ready to go play. Here's the two overlays, and then here's the connector that enables the communications between IRFFB and SimHub. So uh, once you get these files downloaded, the first thing you do is you're going to go into SimHub, and as you relaunch SimHub and you get those installed, um, and by the way, just to make sure you, I'm going back up here and say this connector just simply drops into the SimHub directory. The SimHub dash templates, those get installed like any other dash template does or any other overlay. They go in the dash templates directory. Um, we have videos and such on how to do that up on the Buster's Corner, so I'm not going to go into that. If you need help with that later, then ping me and we'll walk you through it. Um, all right, so. Once you install that DLL connector on SimHub, you can go into available properties and look for this IRFB connector, and you should see these available properties. That tells you that this connector is installed properly. All right. Then what you want to do is you want to go into um, controls and events and then map these um, IRFB connector um, features here to, to one of your buttons on your wheel. Actually, it's to mul multiple buttons. So I may come back and update this again later, but for now, what you have is at a minimum, what you want to do is you want to put increment max force, increment max force to a button and decrement max force to a button, right? Those are super important. I personally have um, under steel wheel force, um, increment and decrement assigned to buttons, as well as um, auto 360 speed. And I am working to, I did have the um, the mode, the FFP type, which is your mode. I had that signed, but I pulled that off because I needed a button again for something else. But you really want to assign these buttons. And so that's what it looked like once you have it all set. Okay. Now, uh, working with Bill, he's got a CSLDD. If you have a Fanatec wheel, what we're finding was that Fanatec really wants to fight against IRFB. So we just set up on Bill's wheel, we set up a whole nother setup, and we pretty much turned down almost everything except the force feedback strength, overall force feedback strength, and we kept that pretty high. What we did find is if we took that to 125%, Bill's wheel went crazy uh, when he when he hit the wall. So you want to be careful with that. And I've had somebody come back with a he's got a 30 newton meter wheel, and I guess um he had a tough time with his thumbs when he crashed it, and he had he had his force feedback up too high on his system as well. All right, let's see. When you're in the game, this is important. You want to leave this force feedback checked all the time because IRFB is going to take care of whether or not it wants to 
to look at the force feedback signal or not. You don't have to uh, manage that so that it makes it easier. So here's an example of how, how I had my Daytona road set up to give you guys a, a you know, a, a starting point. So I had it for the source of game, low latency, 360 smoothing. I put the low latency in there to let you know whether or not you're going to get a latency hit, just for a description. You can see at one time I had my auto switch speed at 47 miles an hour. We'll play with that when I get in there. Uh, min force, <clears throat> you have a direct drive wheel, min force should be zero. If you have a like a G29 or lower wheel, you can actually use the the wheel check utility uh, that Dave Tucker put out to see what your min force would be. But I think um, when I was running G29, I'd probably ran that at five just to give it a little bit. What that does is it says, okay, I'm going to use up so much force just to get the wheel moving. And so um, that's what that min force means. All right, so max force is the strength of the force feedback signal, or if you will, the range and you of the force feedback signal that um, you're going to send to the wheel. Now, this one is, is what it's supposed to be is where you're saying, okay, I have not in theory, if I have an 18 Newton meter wheel, you would think that you'd set this for 18 Newton meters, but that's not how this works with IRFP. The lower the, you slide this, the more force is going to be pushed down to the wheel and you're going to be, it ends up getting compressed and scaled down into a tighter box, if you will. Um, where I tend to, when you run it at a larger number, it actually, you feel like you got, um, what it does is it sets a, a wider range of forces to the wheel. And so you'll start to, um, it'll feel softer, but at the same time, you'll get more fidelity out of the wheel. And and that's that's really the whole thing about IRFP is we wanna get the fidelity out of the wheel. We're gonna, I'll probably try and talk a little bit more about that on track um, and put that in perspective. This is where it gets, people get confused when it comes time to play with this max force. Um, because if you, if you want the wheel to feel stronger, yes, you want to lower that number. But as you lower that number, you start losing fidelity of all the other effects that are into the wheel. So damping um, tends to put that little tension on the wheel. I run mine at zero. You could run that, but unless you need it, unless you feel like the wheel is just all over the place. Now, sometimes what Bill has found is he likes to run it a little damping at places like Daytona and Talladega to help steady that car and help them hold a tighter line. The bumps is the bumps in the road, how much you want to feel those bumps. The effect timing is is actually about um, a, is based on a slip angle calculation. So as you go into the corner, how soon do you want that effect to be felt in the wheel? Um, that too essentially almost represents two degrees of a slip angle into the corner and some have reached out to me and told me that they like one All right and i had been running about three so you'd want to play with that to see how early you want to feel that as you go into the corner on whether or not you feel those the oversteer effect and understeer effect intensities right these two that's how you control how much you're getting feeling those those effects the important thing to think about here is these three, along with your max force, if your max force is so low that you've got a super strong wheel, well, you're going to bleed out or you're going to mask any of these effects over here. And so if you could or you get one too high versus the other and you end up losing any of the feeling. So you want to be careful how you play with those three and um, make sure you, you, you keep tuning it until you, you can feel the effects in your car, in your wheel. Everybody's wheel makes everybody's settings a little bit different. The understeer wheel force is basically controls how mushy that wheel is going to feel going in the corner if you're overdriving the corner. So I tell people to think about 
when you're driving on a road with ice, right? And if you're over, when you turn the wheel too hard when you're on ice, the wheel gets super soft. And that's the feeling you're going to feel when you get the understeer wheel force tuned in. And, and it's not easy. Sometimes you got to drop that thing all the way to one just to see what it feels like. And I'll show you how I, how I tend to dial that in. All right, and then here's the overlays that you're going to see in the car as I, I'm going to take you into a live session. I know that was fast. I didn't get into the theory, a whole lot of theory, but um, what I want you to think Yay, about here is... Yeah, we got pictures. Yeah, you got pictures. Um, what I want you to think about, a, a new way to think of this, and that is, um, I want you to think about this as like a music equalizer. I was going to build up a slide. I'm, I'm going to show you. I started to work it here. The, I didn't finish it, but I'll show it to you. The idea here is think about how you would manage your uh, music coming off your record player and how you would mix that, the audio signals, into your speakers. So the analogy is actually almost direct, and that is think about the car and the tires in the car, that's your needle on the record. The game puts out a signal, and it, they're in waveforms. IRFB, what it does is it sits there and mixes the audio so you get to hear the high tones or low tones that you want to hear in the music. You don't have to turn up the volume blurring loud to hear the tones or the frequencies you want. And the challenge there is, how do you get all that music balanced, whether you got a, a small wheel or small speaker versus a loud, big, giant speaker like a 30 newton meter wheel? IRFB fills that gap for that. But I, So I want you to think about, not about how strong you can run the force feedback, but whether or not you're, you're feeling the, the effects on the road with the IRFB. And so these, these sliders are nothing more than um, sliders you'd get on a um, e music equalizer like we used to run years back. Okay, so that was pretty quick. So um, I, I ran it really fast. Did I lose anybody? Did I scare anybody? Because we're going to go on onto the track here in a second. Hey, Tom. Yep. Does, does your version, does this version of IRFV only work with SimHub or does it work just as a standalone? Um, if you don't run SimHub, then it'll, it'll see it says here SimHub's installed and initialized. It'll just ignore SimHub if you don't have SimHub. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Now, I, um, there's a good chance. I, I think people are looking to have these overlays actually set up to be run on a um, tablet as well. So they don't have to run it on their screen, just off to the side, right on a tablet. Uh, w one more quick question. Yep. You, you have to be running uh, the Joy Doohickey um, V Joy for the game uh, for the game settings to work, right? For... Yes. Okay, so if you're not yeah. running V Joy, then you just run I R F F B three sixty smoothing yes yep uh, let me see hold on let me change let me switch over there let me switch screens here give me a second <laughs> look at that I, I, I don't know that sooner you guys if i don't know i could do that whoops okay here's my i irfp running okay right <laughs> Yep. Uh, so this we great. can see the different um, modes you can pick. Glad you like it, David. So I'm falling asleep over. If here. you are using one of the two games of lower latencies, then you need VJoy. If you're running auto FFB, then you need VJoy because it's going to switch automatically switch uh, between uh, low latency mode 360 and uh, the. We have to ask Tom. I don't uh, see why not. latency. You know what? I'll probably put it down and in. I'll show you uh, where you would want to do that. Oh yeah, we got the we got the IRFBB. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll have Tom put the slides up there. So now there was also a question that came up. This guy that used 360 telemetry for suspension effects. Let me explain to you what that does. 
So if I am in game low latency, right, 360 smoothing, if I uncheck this, I actually reduce that latency even lower, but I don't use the 360 hertz telemetry for suspension effects. So basically, it's, all it's going to do is it's going to take the FFP signal from iRacing, it's going to apply a, um, 60 hertz, a 360 hertz smoothing filter to it and then put it out. So it makes it really fast. So it's still you still get some enhancements. You even get the um, I think you get the 60 hertz uh, telemetry enhancements still, but it's super. It's like four milliseconds or less of latency, and so that's you know that's where you, if you're running your Talladega or Daytona, that's really where you'd want that. All right. Okay, so. This guy, uh, let me, um, all right, let me pop over to, um, some hub. Oh, if I go to sim hub, you may not be able to hear me, but we'll, we'll try this. Okay, so, yeah. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do is uh, when you're into some, I'm, I'm going to talk you through it and then I'm going to pop over that screen. When you install these, the the DLL and the overlays, first thing I want, actually, even before you do the install, what I want you to do is I want you to go into SimHub and check for errors. And I'll show you. And what you do, you go into the console and then you scroll down and you look for anywhere you're seeing errors pumping out in the log. I'll show you here, and I'll come back to talk. Okay. So, yeah, so SimHub won't let me talk while I'm in it, but you saw how I went through that, that log, right? Um, in fact, you sh if you run in some hub, you want to check that log because I, what I have found is there are some DLLs that, not DLLs, but plugins that I was running on overlays that I didn't make, somebody else made, and they were pumping out errors, so I had to stop using those, that overlay. All right, so let me go into the car here. Oh, wait, one more thing. Let me show you the, um, the, um, let me show you those key bindings in the properties here real quick. All right, so that was fast, but um, oh, you can still see, I see, you can still see that while I'm talking to it. Um, so you can see that's where the properties are at uh, and they're filled up just to make sure that it's all working after it's installed. And then, and then you can see my controls and events. Okay, so so let me go into the car here, and then talk you through some of this, how how I use this in the car and how I tune it up. Hey Tom, I got the free version of Sim Hub. Does that matter? So do I. Um, I think I actually I think I did pay for the when for some reason the licensing messed up. No, it doesn't matter. That's a good question though. I just thought I'd show you some of my uh, 
crazy overlay screens here, but let me let me shrink that down here for a second. Okay, can you guys see the car I'm in? Yeah. Okay. All right, so right now when I got in the car, you can see up here at the top. Let me make these bigger. All right, obviously I don't run them that big. I make them nice and small, but you can see here on the top of the I can see that I'm running game 360. I don't have auto speed because it's it's not available because it's not running. And I have max force at 47, under steel wheel force at 18. You can see my FFB signal is, is red. And so there might be a problem with my FFB. And then the wheel is direct input. So that means the wheel's getting it. I'm getting feedback or uh, data from the uh, direct input for the wheel, and I'm getting data from my racing. Right, so I just made so while the FB was red, that didn't mean that I didn't have FB IRFB wasn't running. It just means that the sim hub and and IRFB weren't talking yet. So what I do is I just hit my max force button a couple times, and it and it establishes that connection, now it's fully functional. So you can see in the while I'm in the car, even right here in the pits, I can actually use in those um, button bindings that I have, and I can actually adjust my force feedback level, if you will. And remember, the, the higher it is, the softer it is in the wheel. Um, but because I've got it balanced with my oversteer and understeer effects, then um, I'm still getting full fidelity out of the track. The understeer wheel force again is tells it sets the level of when the wheel wants to break loose in an understeer condition. Now, if you look at FFB signal, the red dot or the green dot, if I hold the wheel just right, I can make that thing go red. What that is is that's that's saying okay, I'm not getting. So what the game is saying is okay. You need zero wheel torque is all. So if you see it blink a little bit red like that, that just means you're crossing over the point where um, you're dead center from a steering wheel torque perspective. So I'm going to pop out real quick, and I'm going to change the mode here to Auto 360. Hey, for any of you guys that, that came in this late, um, we are doing this. We are recording this on YouTube, so you can go back to it later and start from the beginning. Okay, so I just changed the IR FFB mode to Auto 360. And once again, what Auto 360 does is if I'm below the auto speed setting of 47 miles per hour, IR FFB is going to put me into the IR FFB mode of um, 360. Why do I want that? Is if I'm going in a slow turn, I can afford the lower latency. So I get the full enhanced power of IRFB through my corners. This is going to help me identify when I'm either understeering or oversteering. Now, if I go above 47 miles an hour, then it's going to switch me to the game 360. So I still get enhancements, but I get the lower latency on the higher speed sections. Now, so let me go through and show you here. So if I'm just driving a track the first time, Watch, uh, watch my understeer wheel force. Oops, I'm going to take that guy like super down low, right? Because I want to know if it's going to help me determine when I'm overdriving a corner. So as I come through this corner here, make sure I don't hit the wall. So what I want to show you is if I'm going to drive this track for the first time, and I and I did this 
just this week for Daytona Road. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be looking at my um, my speedometer, and I'm going to figure out, okay, so how fast am I going through these corners? There's 47, 48. All right, so maybe then what I want to do is, is I get down this, this other corner. I think that that was about 47, 48. Might have been the right number. Okay, so for this corner, it's a little, it's a little faster. So what I would do is, I saw I started entering that corner about 65. I'm going to actually take this, uh, this auto speed, and I'm going to bump that up to 65. Maybe in send five, get a little bit of extra room there. All right. So now I just set this IRFB in the car on the fly, so that now I get a specific switching. So I get the best uh, feel for my corners. And yet now when I go into the higher speed, I'm going to get the lower latency, if you will. All right. So you got the idea behind that. So ideally what I would do is I'd have a mode. Oops. I would have a mode specifically on uh, the FFB mode on a, on a pair of buttons, if you will that I could adjust that on the fly if I wanted to switch even in a race somewhere. So, yep, yep. Questions? questions? I had one. Uh, if you have triple monitors and you have the uh, RF FFB screen up on one of them, can you make the adjustments there? Will they take effect? Yeah, IRFB yeah, doesn't I care which screen care. you're on. Yeah, I I can yeah, move, I, I can move that to one of my side panels. I I have three screens as well. I'm only showing the big one, uh, the the center one, uh, because the text will get too small. Now, I'm talking about you know the initial screen you had up where you were showing all your selections. Can you make the change just there? Okay. Rather than okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Okay. All right. So now I get what you're saying here. What? Because what? my overlays are talking to IRFFB. All right, so all right, so if you remember, the, so remember these settings: Auto 360, 71, 47, and three. Okay, let me, let me cover that here because that's a great question. Give me a second. Okay, so I just brought up the IRFFP screen. These are the same numbers, 71, 47, and three. What happens is when you change it, change the settings in the car, it sends those settings back over to the IRFFP so that when you now, when you quit that track, all those settings are going to be saved over. So, yeah, so you were actually, when you're in the car, you're actually changing. You, if, if you saw my screen, I could, if I was in the car and had this up, you would see the settings on this screen change as you hit your buttons in your, on your car. And if you, if you change it on this panel, you would see the buttons change on your, in your car, vice versa. Yes, it is completely yes. synchronized. If you change it here, it changes in the car. If you change it in the car, it changes here. Right, thanks. Yeah, they're perfectly synchronized. So that's pretty much it. So I will tell you though, you know, what IRFB doesn't like is when I start switching, like I'm switching between screens here. So if I'm going, what I've learned is if I'm in practice, and you know how it takes us from practice, you join, hit the race green race button and it takes you into the race. What you, what I, how I've gotten mine to settle down is I don't swap between screens during that process. I just let it take me over and I stay. If I'm popping using alt tab between screens, that's when IRFB, direct input, VJoy and the game 
start getting confused on who's who's driving your steering wheel. But as long as I keep it clean like that, then it settles down. But having the overlay and the status overlays, I can see right away if there's a problem. And usually I've been able to recover. Help settle down. But you know, I, I'm not going to deny IRFB in the VDROI can be buggy, but having those overlays in the status helps minimize that a lot. And I have put in extra checks in the code to try and figure out when when it's starting to happen. But there's it's still there's some so my version is better than you've seen in the past. Um, but I'm not going to lie that there's still some challenges out there with it. But and hopefully over time we can take a look at those and get those cleaned up. I went through pretty quick. I mean, it's that easy, right? It's that simple. That's that's why I use it. It's bringing it into the car, it makes it even easier and be able to be able to adjust this on the fly um, is nice. Um, that's why I'm a big advocate of, you know, running those sim hub overlays. I know a lot of you guys don't like sim hub, um, but maybe worth a consideration. So now, um, with that said, is anybody using IRFB and, and you have problems and, and maybe we can take a look and see if we can work through some of you guys' problems? Or did I go too fast? <laughs> Any questions, you guys? I'm John Mute. So many questions. Yeah, so th this was supposed to be more of an interactive session than me just drilling, you know, 30 slides and going deep on. Yeah, somebody say something. I, I don't even know if mine works. How about that for a question? <laughs> well, uh, do, you, do you have it installed? Yes, I've been playing with it all day. I've gone in and out of sessions. Sometimes I've got a ton of force feedback. Sometimes I don't have any, so and I'm not sure why. Are are you using the overlays by any chance? Yes, um, but I don't know how to configure hotkeys and okay. adjustments in the box. Okay, so I think it'd be useful for everybody if we if you would volunteer as a subject and let's see if we can walk you through and get you up and running. Sounds exciting. I mean, it is calling me to the carpet, so I better, I better be able to figure it out. Otherwise, everybody's going to thumbs a moron. But yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, nobody says that. <laughs> so, um, let me stop sharing, and then, are you set up to where you can share your screen? Yep. All right, let's all go over there. Should I have my next gen car? Because right now I'm in my truck. You can use truck. Truck is fine. Okay. Let's see. Um, uh, there it is. Perfect. Okay, I got it on this side. I'm, I'm in. <clears throat> it looks good. Okay, so here's going to be a challenge: is we're going to have you go into SimHub. Um, now, what I've so hold on before you go into SimHub. If you are on the SimHub screen, you won't be able to talk to us while you're in SimHub. But if you if you pop out under the Discord, you'll see the small your SimHub screen, and you can talk to us while you're in. Um, you'll be able to talk to us while you're in Sim on Discord. You'll figure it out. Okay. So I need to get out of this the yep. overlay layout editor and bring. Yeah, it. let's kill that and bring up the menu. Let's go look at your. Show us your console log first. Let's make sure there's no errors. So bring up SimHub screen. All right, perfect. Um, click on system log and then scroll down slowly so we can look at it. You're going to make me get my glasses back on. Yeah, me too. Okay. Are the connectors running? Keep going. Now what we're doing is I saw your the connector was installed just fine. Now I'm looking for if anything's barfing here, th throwing up. By the way, guys, really pay attention to the system log here because 
if a if one of the overlays anybody's overlays is is causing errors it will slow your computer down big time so far so good looks good keep going good no errors okay that's clean so that's how you like when you say look it'll say air on there oh yeah yeah it will um i got so it if it doesn't say air leave it alone if it says air oh. then delete it oh no 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 so hold on so you'll see it when these overlays um fail or have errors it it just starts generating errors like crazy it's just a repeat 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 and it's obvious you'll know it right away and then you'll see which and it'll tell you which one is uh, is having an error so should one you, of the later should you ever yeah. clear the logs on this screen no you don't need to clear them you just need to go if you have an overlay that's um causing errors and you want to go um, disable right. that overlay so i had a um one of the overlays i was running had you know the had the gap not the gap but the stents and then i had been running it and then it started to have an error so i did kill that overlay on my dashboard okay so that looks good now go into um available properties i've been up there ir ffb okay that's good now we got we made sure everything's there everything looks healthy all right so um click controls and events um all right you're going to need to decide pick two buttons that one is going to be increase and decrease let's map um max force to um keys that you that you can go up and down with so you need one for up one for one for increment one for decrement and if you got that decided then click on new mapping and we'll know you're ready to proceed can those buttons be on the keyboard you know what? Um, you I know tried. What? I tried. I could not get one to map to a keyboard. Hey, Tom. I. Hey, Tom. Yeah. Well, I actually, I actually got mine I, mapped to a keyboard. I couldn't really remember to tell you how I did it, but I did manage to get it to a keyboard for us. Oh, that's good. That's good. Maybe I was that's picking it. the wrong key. It took, it took a lot of trial and error, but I finally got it to work. I was trying to do the up and down arrows. Okay, so um, Dave, you're going to type in at the on at the top right. Type to filter. I R F F B. There you go. That's good. All right. So you're going to click increment max force. One click, and then you're going to press the button on your that you want to assign it to. Just once. There you go. Hit OK. OK, new mapping. IRFFB again. There you go. Decrement max force up right there. And hit a button on your wheel. Hit OK. OK, now you're done there. We're going to start with those two and see how that goes. Um, Dash Studio. Well, do you have, if you already have the overlays running, then go and go to the truck. All right, now you should be able to talk to us. Here I am. Okay. So minimize your waiting for the game. Hey Dave, uh, uh, for uh, for the record, can you pronounce your last name for us? Rhymes with huge. Okay, that's all we thought too. Fuge. So it's Fuge. Fuge. Oh, Fuge. Okay, Fuge. Huge Fuge. Yep. We have the same problem, by the way, with our last name. Yeah, hog U E. Hoog. Hoog. <laughs> are, are those the alternate pronunciations you guys hear? <sighs> Venetian said huge for me. I said thank you, sir. Uh, um, okay, that's a bad joke. Yeah, make those bigger so we can see but, them. But you do say it hog, right? 
Yeah. Rogue like Rogue. We'd okay. I'd do it the same way uh, Fuge did it. All right, cool. Okay, so your max force. All right, so Dave, the reason why you couldn't tell you your max force is, is at the high end. Um, so I would probably start with this guy down at 40. So use your new newly assigned buttons and run that down to 40. All right, there you go. Go ahead and give it a try. Tell me how that how it feels there. You sh do you is the wheel loose right now? No, it's uh feels pretty stiff. Oh, you know what? Let's check something real quick. We need to check something. Go ahead and stop and get out of the truck. And we're going to go and have you recalibrate that wheel so I can see the recalibration. Options, yep. Okay, you're going to recalibrate the wheel. And so what I'm looking for is you go all the, all the way one way, right? Go all the way back. And what I'm looking for is to this number position. To, I want to see a 200% is what I'm looking for. Okay, so we don't have B-Joy running. All right, so what motor? Are you, yeah, hit done. Done. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. You got to finish that. Hit done there. And bring up. I should have VJoy running. Bring up IRFP uh, config screen. It seems to think you have BJ running. Oh, uh, bet you've got a G Hub or something. I see BJ here. Your BJ is there. All right, uh, change your let's change your mode to. Um, IRFP. Uh, 316. Yep. Now go and go in the truck. Okay, give it a try. So what we're doing is right now we're we're checking that everything else is working, but I think we you're you're having a problem with the V Joy and Logitech drivers does it feel but different is it, does it matter what version of video you have um uh, right now right now I, i'm running 2.18 and i think it works think it with everything below 2.18 so dave what so are you dave, feeling now I don't, I don't, I don't really feel like I don't it's really feel like it. on. on. Somebody needs to mute their mic. Somebody needs to... So say that again, Dave. I don't really feel like it's on. I don't, I don't feel, I don't feel anything different from what it would normally feel like. Um, okay. When I was. When I was running earlier, I was running at Wilkesboro with the, the next gen, and when it was working right, like you could really feel the bumps in the steering wheel. Now I, right. I don't really feel like I'm feeling anything. It just feels like it's, I don't know. It feels like it's got a lot of force feedback in the game, but not the benefit of the IFFB. Right. Um. So let's. Adjust the. So did it feel? So you felt like you had force feedback there. Oh, oh um, 
Yeah, and when I went from seventy five down to forty, it didn't. I didn't feel any difference. So it's still the same then, right? Yes. All right, take that down to thirty or twenty five. We're looking for a, an extreme here. All right, test that. That should be like crazy hard. You should almost be able to feel a difference right there. It should be heavy in his hands, right? Yeah, it should be heavy. I don't feel any difference. Okay, let's go back to your... Um... Let's see. Why is bring up your suspect your boy the picture on, your, picture on picture on picture is pretty bad your resolution or isn't your it? logic software. What are you running? Are you running? Um, take me to options. I've got a G twenty seven. All right, click on options real quick. No, 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 not there. Options in the game. Okay, done. Let me see um, IRFB screen one more time. Oops. Roll down. Um, yeah, scroll that, scroll down a little bit there. It, it's interesting. It, it thinks. So you, when you increase it down to 25, you were clipping a lot. Um, so then the question is why? So it looks like to me that you're running into a problem with your logic software. So let's bring that up real quick. Did you update your G? Are you running G Hub or something? Uh, no. You don't have any Logitech con configuration software? Hello, Tom. Can I say something? Yep. Uh, I haven't run IRFFB in a long time, but uh, the last time I ran it was a couple years ago. But when it, when it was enabled, if I were to look in the option screen in the game, it would show that the feedback settings were disabled there. Is that what that showed when he showed that screen? I couldn't see. Yeah, so what that's, it, it will show that, yeah. Because because what it does is when it picks up, the IRFB sends a max force signal to, to the game. And that's when the game says, oh, you got third-party software that's doing some stuff. Yeah, don't, don't download that, Dave. Um, uh, okay, but when he showed that screen, it was too brief. Did, did it show it was disabled in the game? Oh, go ahead and bring up the options um, options tab in the game. See, it's enabled there, right? And then what, what they do is they, they um, disable the linear mode and then reduce is what I usually, that's what I get as well. Okay, I, I I thought that it was disabled there in the game when I used it a couple years ago. So, and, and that was con causing some confusion. So, in fact, you never really needed to uncheck that box because IRFB will, you tell the IRF, IRFFB program to, to ignore the game's FFB signal by the mode you select. So if you leave it enabled, then it's there. Then it's there for whether you want to look at their signal or you don't. All right. So okay. that's why you always leave it enabled. Okay. I, I 
I did. I seem to remember I didn't have an option that was automatically just ch- unchecked there in the game. Yeah, no, it's been. I think they changed that in on the iRacing side. All right, so, so David, it looks like to me that there's, um, um you have some Logitech yeah. software that is is conflicting with the IRS <laughs> being. Because IRFB is getting the uh, uh, somebody's got to mute. Somebody's got to mute. All right. Um, does in, is anybody else with the logic seeing the same problem? I, I have the G twenty nine, but I, I think mine is working because I can feel a difference in how stiff the wheel is as I change that max force. But I'm I'm running G Hub. I, I have it up. You are running G Hub. So David, what are you running? I I thought isn't that isn't that a Logitech symbol next to Motec on your taskbar? The bottom screen? That yeah, nope. That one right there. What's that? What's that that's, one? Oh Steam. Steam. Okay, I knew I recognized that symbol somewhere. Yeah, I don't have the G Hub installed. I guess that's my next move then. Yeah, that's. Yeah, we'll definitely. Unfortunately, yep. We're going to have to take a look at why that's. You said you had it working before, though, and then it stopped. Yeah, I was able to get it to work, um, but like I said, it was hit or miss. Like it would work, and then I'd leave the sim and I'd I'd reopen it, and then it wouldn't work. So there was I I couldn't figure out why it worked sometimes and it wouldn't work sometimes. Now I'm in a now I'm in a mode again where it's not working again, and I can't figure out why. Yeah, that's definitely got the. Um... Logitech wheel. So you have n- no program that y- you can figure the wheel with. No, just through the options here. Interesting. Maybe I should though. Yeah. Hate to have you install G Hub on the fly here, because then. That may create more problems. Yeah, let's let's come back to that one on the sideline then, and then we can uh, yeah, we'll post take notes. That one off. I mean, post results up there later. Yeah, Dave. Yeah, let's set up a one-on-one and we can take that offline because it's going to drive your. Now it's getting deep on that computer. Yeah, exactly. So, was there anybody else that had um, problems? I've I've still got to load it, so I I don't have an answer for that yet. I'm running into the Logitech issue, but I'm messing around with it right now, seeing if I can. I think I got it fixed. If he'll try to just unplug the wheel and plug it back up, that kind of fixed mine. Interesting. Uh, and Kevin, are you running G Hub? Are you guys running G Hub? Mike? No, I I don't run G Hub. I just I just I got a G twenty nine and I use the four speed back settings and uh, I racing. I don't have anything else. All so right. I try unplug, unhooking my wheel and plugging it back in. I think that's what uh, Kevin or Mark said. That 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 doesn't seem like a. I may get you by a little bit, but we need to. I need to come back and look and see why that's dropping off for you guys. 
Okay, if that's uh, all we got left is just what uh, Dave's got going on, then um, if nobody else got anything else to throw out there, I think we're I think we're about done here. <clears throat> okay, it's all silent. Like everybody's had a full belly at the kitchen table. All right, Tom Hogue, we thank you. Appreciate it, buddy. I'm sure you guys are going to love this one. I'm sure we're going to let more uh, uh, questions back at it. You guys put them up there in the on the Discord. Ask the admin. If you got questions, pop them up there, and that's where Tom and I watch that up there quite a bit so we can catch them as fast as we can and get back to you guys. Thank you, guys. We really appreciate all the efforts. Thanks for the demo. Appreciate it. Okay. You're Deep. welcome. Hopefully it was useful. Yeah, thanks, guys. D-Train, aren't you going out of town? I am out of time. I'm sitting and in the bathroom on my phone so my wife doesn't uh, interfere with the with this stuff. I don't, I'm not at home, so I'm not in my rig, but I wanted to watch the video, so we delayed dinner so I could so I could do this. <laughs> I've heard it all now, buddy. Okay. Dedication. Uh, okay. Yeah, and like I said, if you guys want you know one on ones to work through some of the stuff, you know, just reach out to me, and I can usually find time to do one on ones and help work through some of these technical issues. All right, you guys, we're out of here. See you guys later. Happy race day. Good night, everybody.